bang, 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 bang. Are you someone tuning a guitar? Yeah, I, I, 100%. Oh, really? I, was <laughs> <laughs> I was a guitar being tuned. I like it. Now it's on you to tell me which model of guitar. Bang, 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 bang. That's impossible. Bang. Because you're not a guitar. Bang, bang, bang. But I'm doing a specific type of guitar when it gets oh, tuned. Oh, right. You are bang. a left handed bang. Fender Telecaster from. The 90s. Ah, Strat Seven. Stratocaster, Mexican made. Sorry, but that's okay. all right. Hey, look, you know. You know what's funny, though? What? Even as a musician, when people like brag about certain kinds of guitars, I'm just like, I don't know what that means. It I means that you're a tool. <laughs> I feel like uh, they don't know what it means either. I feel like it's just cool to pretend. I don't know. I mean, all guitars sound different. When I really like a guitar, I, I do will I will know the, the type that it is. But yeah. I don't go searching for specific kinds. Yeah, I guess it's just a thing I don't give a shit about when it's like, yeah, if the guitar, if you can make an, um, like, does it really matter if you can make amazing music, but on like a shittier guitar? So what? Yeah, I think that's kind of cool. Like you look at someone like yeah. Glenn Hansard from the movie Once or the band The Faces. And he like just was an Irishman in Dublin and his guitar is super beat up because he was a busker for so long. Yeah. But it's the perfect guitar for him because he wore he wore it. Exactly. To, to be him. I don't I have, I have n none of those things you just said registered with me except for the busted <laughs> guitar. <Yeah. laughs> but I get that. Like, yeah, like that's that shouldn't really matter. But every time you do this, though, every time I'm like, I don't think it matters what kind of guitar you play as long as you're making uh, great music come out of it. Someone will throw a, like they'll try and turn it on me as a comedian. They're oh, like, yeah. well, what if you're a comedian? It's like, no, if you're a comedian, doesn't matter if you're an ugly, busted, <laughs> fucking shitty body. If you can make awesome jokes come out of it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, if we're the instruments, it doesn't matter who we are as long as we can create quality. That's true. But so now there, I'm so like, fuck now your analogy. Turn around. All right. Bam, not you. I'm not saying you, but to the people who would come at me. I was just like picturing like what is the the equivalent of that is like some like really um, like big, shiny electric guitar that was used by like Kiss or whatever, you know, like really bright colors, very like, yeah. you know, uh, that kind of hair metal uh, glamorous rock. That is a and, but it's trying to tell like really deadpan jokes on stage. It's a Oh, oh, uh, I mean, that's, I mean, <laughs> if you look at, if you look at Stephen Wright, yeah, there's a picture of Stephen Wright. You probably wouldn't, and you didn't know who he was. That's true. You probably wouldn't be like, oh, this guy's probably dead pound. He's like balding with his bushy hair. I love him. He's a skinny white guy. He probably, if you'd never seen him before and you looked at him, just a f still picture and you had no idea who Stephen Wright was, but they're like, that guy's a comedian. What energy level do you think he's at? You'd probably be like, oh, that guy's probably crazy with his bald head and his bushy <laughs> hair. And then he's like, well, I, uh, he basically <laughs> invented takes forever to band. get a sentence out. But anyway, yeah. point being, uh, the point you're, being, you're, next you're listening to the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Five words. <laughs> That's Sean Patton. And that is Caitlin Cook. Uh, hello. Uh, and you're listening to five words, the podcast where we have on a guest. They have a story they're going to tell us. They tell us five words of the story. We tell them what we think the story is based on those five words and what we know about the guest. Yeah. And we nail it every goddamn time. And then they just tell us the real story to be redundant. You know, I was waiting for a moment to chime in there and then I didn't have to. I'm getting better at the sum, the summing up. You, of did, you just nailed it. Just summed it. You just sum that up. And it, like it, that, that summation was like a fucking guitar solo. Thank you. On a but on a beautiful a noodle on an epiphone uh, <laughs> pointy guy. <laughs> you know the epiphone, epiphone guy? The epiphone guitars, but they have like the pointy tips. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I don't even know if, it's called, if, 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 if that's called the tip of the guitar, but yes. Yeah. Whatever. The guy from uh, ACDC plays that model. That model, that's what you are. Thank you. You're an AC, you're a, you're a lead guitarist of ACDC whose name I can't fucking remember, but I do know it. But he wears shorts. <laughs> <laughs> but he wears shorts, shorts with a suit, which I always thought was fucking hilarious because he dressed like a schoolboy. Anyway, so speaking of fucking hilarious and schoolboys, your next <laughs> <laughs> this week's guest is not only fucking hilarious, but seriously looks like he's about 17. Yeah, he's in his 30s, I think. Yeah, but he looks he's got a young 
childlike face. You you trust it. You do trust it. And, and you kind of also don't trust it because <laughs> then you're like, why do you look you, – you look too trustworthy to trust. And that's a good thing. Yeah. And like then you, he surprises you with a zinger. And it's still, and a, but a trustworthy zinger in the yes. sense that it's still funny. Absolutely. I'm real – I wish I could just <laughs> give a compliment and then not just immediately walk it back. <laughs> and then then – then immediately after I walk it back, sprint full force forward, because then I just end up tripping, falling, and spilling the compliment everywhere, and it doesn't make sense. Well, and then you have to clean it up. That is something you should add to your practice. We'll do. <laughs> uh, but yes, don't. Hilarious. Uh, hails from Cincinnati, Ohio, no. where he started doing. Well, that's where he started doing comedy. That's where he started doing. You comedy. can hear the rest yeah. where he's from uh, on the episode. Sam Evans is his Sam name. Sam Evans. Uh, he has an album coming out soon that he recorded at Go Bananas in Cincinnati. Ah, great club. I'm really excited to listen to it. I think he's, he says it in the episode. I think it comes out like early April. April 7th is what I want to say right now, but I might be wrong. Yeah. Um, it, it, yeah, and it's called. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? No, because I, I remember what it was called, but I. I no, it was a great name, too. Shit. It was a good name. I can't remember. Whatever. That. That, but, well, hey, there it is. Cliffhanger. Oh, no. Got to listen to the episode to find out the name of the album. It's a great fucking name. Yeah. Great comedian. Great all-around guest. Sam Evans. Look him up on all the socials if you need to first. He's fantastic. Yeah. And you'll um, love it. He's one of those, like, so he did Good God, and he wasn't booked to do it. He was just there, and we had a bunch of people running late. Um, and so we just threw him up on stage and he like totally killed. He's one of those people that you'll just throw him up yeah. on stage and he will always you will always trust him to kill. And he will just like bring this happy energy to the audience. He's like a he's like a, a Gibson Les Paul. <laughs> yeah. Just to put it in any put it in the hands of a capable musician. It'll make beautiful sounds come from it. But it has nothing to do with the guitar itself. But that's <laughs> see, there I go. Uh, there I go. Uh, complimenting no, and walking. You're no, back. but he is. So he's like a. Let's make him more of a. If he were a guitarist, fucking. I'm trying to think of a. Uh, I got it. Tom Morello. Oh, nice. Rage Against the Machine. In event in the sense that he's gonna eventually invent his own sound one day. Damn. Yeah, there it is. So give the episode a listen. We'll stop yammering and giving uh, lots of guitar metaphors, and we'll get to the conversation. But first, Sean, where are you gonna be this week? I believe we are going to be in Colorado in... No, that's the following week. That's next. Oh, this week? Yeah. Shit. This week I'm in New York. I'm just in New York doing shows uh, all I over mean, town. I tell, mean, tell the people in Colorado if they want to get tickets in advance. No, no. That's listen to the next episode. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. To find out where in Colorado. But uh, just yeah. in case you don't, we're going to be in um, Steamboat Springs, Colorado mm -hmm. on the 29th. At the Chief Theater. Mm -hmm. Check it the fuck out. It's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, seriously, that show is going to be amazing. I promise that. Um, but up until then. Yeah, that'll be fun. It'll just be. I'm just around New York. Um, Caitlin. Yeah. I can. I can. Caitlin is going to be. Oh, well, uh, first tonight, if uh, we're not sold out, uh, there are probably still tickets at the door. Uh, the February Good God is happening tonight oh, yes. in Bushwick. So if you're in New York, come out. Uh, the lineup is sick. It's the Lucas Brothers, Christina Hutchinson, Randy, the Purple Puppet, Jenny Zagrino, Martin Durbano, Allison Leiby, and maybe some special guests. Is it, doesn't he go by Randy Feltface? Uh, he has three names. Randy, usually. Then yeah. Randy, the Purple Puppet, and then Randy Feltface. Ah, okay. And he sold out all three shows at Union Hall, so this is your last chance to see him in New York for a little bit. Yeah. And um and then yeah, the you, the, the date that you were gonna guess is April twenty third. April twenty third. Yeah, I will be at fifty four below Fine Signs fifty four below. Fine Signs fifty four below. In New York, doing my big show. Hell's Death Kitchen, Wish. New York. It is a show about how if something scares me, I have to do it, and it's um, Broadway musicians, Broadway musical director, just off Broadway. I went there to see a show this weekend, and I got really excited about performing there myself. So please buy your tickets now. And buy your tickets later, too. And also, uh, yeah. Buy your tickets whenever you feel comfortable buying them, but buy them. Well, don't buy them after April 20th. Don't do that. That'd be. Because that would, that's a weird however, level of comfort that you have. If you do not go to the show and you just want to give Caitlin some money, buy tickets afterwards. But don't be an idiot. Buy it before. Go to the show. <laughs> okay. We should leave this <laughs> intro. It's like 10 minutes long now. No, it's not even 10 <laughs> minutes. 
Uh, all right. We love you guys. Thank you for listening. Oh, we need some more reviews and things and follows. So just find us on the social medias. Leave a review. Like and subscribe. All that. All that shit. Do it. And, uh, you know, you do it. Maybe we'll tell you what kind of guitar you sound like. But Ooh. for now, take a listen to Sam Evans. We love him. And we hope you do, too. Um, are we rolling? We're rolling. Is the volume up? Uh, yes. The, are you hearing us in the world? Houston, we don't have a problem. Cool. <laughs> that would be great to be an astronaut and just do that. Just go, Houston, we're cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know? that, that would be the cool part about being we an astronaut. We don't have a, that, that. <laughs> yes, yes. Not the, Getting to say. Not the, the part of being in space. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so our guest is actually, I mean, and this is, I'm not trying to shame him, never been to space. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Sam Evans, he's never actually been to space, though. I, that was the only thing I didn't want to be brought in. <laughs> so I was like, please don't tell him I haven't been to space. It's a that, real I know. Spot. Yeah. <laughs> what That'd an insecurity. You were like, uh, no, 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 I've been to space, guys. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Why is he saying that? Yeah, yeah. Super been there. Why are you lying about my exploits? You know what, though? I just, there's this movie that's out right now. Well, it's been out. It's called Ad Astra. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, have you seen it? Uh, I haven't. That's the Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt right? movie. It's a very fucking good movie. Yeah. But it also really leans into the notion that we are absolutely alone. That mm. there is no, there are no alien. Really? Like, it's just like humanity is alone, is an, is an anomaly in the universe and uh -oh. is alone. And it does it in a way that's not like religious or yeah. any of that shit. It's just about like, well, what if? What if we actually are the only, you know, sentient life mm -hmm. in the fucking existence? Mm -hmm. And just, I was watching it on a plane and it was like, man, this is too heady for 35,000 feet. <laughs> <laughs> I wish this flight That's would a land. bad plane movie. <laughs> they should really control what they're yeah. putting out there. Do you, do you feel that way though when you fly where you're like, I can't watch anything too intense. Yeah. Oh, I need, I need to something. be on the earth to like yeah. think this yeah. shit out. Yeah. The one I will say that I watched once upon a time in Hollywood, it, but that is actually not too. The ending is like so fun and weird oh, to yeah, me dude. that I was like, I'm glad I watched this on a plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also watched that on a plane and was sort of like, okay. And then like when I landed and got to my hotel room, I like. I went down a fucking rabbit hole of the Manson murder. Sure. And yes. then the whole thing was like, oh, he's doing the thing he did with Inglorious Bastards. Yes, exactly. Where it's not actually, oh. Yeah, yeah. And I made that sound. I went, oh. And, <laughs> and that he kind of did with Django and Chain, too, where it's like. Oh, where he just sort of like. Yeah, like, like took pieces of history and mm -hmm. was like, but what if it was fun and bloody? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what if, what if we could, what if we could do a Rick Ross soundtrack yeah. to something that took place before the Ross family? Well, probably his ancestors were slaves. Sure. Yeah. And so absolutely. there you go. That made sense of why. Yeah. Aha, Quentin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quentin. He's probably been to space. Yeah. Would you go to space? Absolutely. Is space tourism real yet? I know they're talking about <laughs> yeah, it. I, I don't know think it's like so. it's going to happen. But In our lifetimes, probably. But yeah. we'll I feel like old. Elon Musk will head it up. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I don't, there's got to be like, and I'm pretty sure of this. We don't even need to fact check this. There's got to be some psychological test you have to clear to be allowed to leave the earth. Yeah. Even oh, in a yeah, yeah, yeah. facility. Yeah. Or if, uh, uh, like, because I think it would fuck with my head. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if I would do it. Yeah. I, I'm space tourism. I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't know. Or like the idea of just going and you're like, you're on the moon and then you come back and like, nothing's the same. I, that happens to me when I go to like, you know, the upper West side and I'm like, my whole, <laughs> my whole worldview is different now. It's my home. Now you're on the upper yeah, stratosphere. True. I just yeah. like the idea of someone being like, Oh my God, you haven't been to the moon. You mm. have to go. Yeah. It's like a super enlightening experience. Oh my God. They have. I kind of wish there was a psychological testing just for flights. That would be. Oh yeah. Right? You, yeah. Specifically the, the one that reveals why all humans turn into fucking beat like pieces of shit mm. when the boarding process begins yeah, yeah. it is unbelievable <laughs> where you're just like hey we're all and i'm i've been guilty of it i'm not okay in the past year i have freed myself from this thought process mm -hmm. but i was guilty of it for years yeah where it's just like they're like the person saying like uh ladies and gentlemen we're, we board by zone 
stay seated. No need to stand up now and clog. And uh, you just instinctually stand up and like lurk around <laughs> your fuck. The, You're the, still bad at this. I don't believe that. No, no. I've changed. gotten better at it because I realize, well, also because Delta Platinum, you know what I'm saying? I get called up early. <laughs> you want to board the flight early, you know, do the shit right and stick to an airline. But um, also, also, also Delta, I love being upgraded. Stop putting me in middle row, though. I hate it. And yeah, I put, Delta, who's I hate definitely it. listening to I really the podcast. Hate, they are. I really hate being fucking put in the middle. And I know there's an option on the website where you can say, but it disappears sometimes. Sometimes mm. it's like, do you want a row in your preferred seat? And sometimes it's not there. Anyway, point being, if you're going to upgrade me, I don't want to be in the middle. I'd rather stay in the back by a window. I need a window to fly because I need to be able to look at the ground. And if there's clouds, those are good too. Anyway, <laughs> but people... That's, that's your thing. You have to see the ground or clouds or he something. He has to read the instructions. On this the is not something we need panel. to put out there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sorry. 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 Yeah. I've got my little OCD moment. Sorry. Yeah. But no, it's okay. We can put it out there. I, I read the instructions. Mm -hmm. I follow along with the safety thing sure. every time. Like it's my first time on a flight. That's great. I'm terrified to not do that. I... Yeah. Uh, I'm guessing flying makes you very nervous. Thank you you. fly. Here's the thing: the technology of flying does not. Okay. Uh, like I, they, there's enough go that goes into air, and also straight up, um, major airlines or a corporation, a flight crashes, they lose millions. Mm -hmm. It's the one case where like American, gr like capitalist greed will yeah. keep you alive. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, my whole thing is the pilots. Yeah. Because it's like we put our lives in the hands of these two fucking guys. Yeah. Sometimes three if you're taking an international flight. And like, I want to know. Yeah. Sometimes, like, I'll get to the gate early and look at the pilot. Like, so that, because the pilots usually arrive at the gate 45 to 50 minutes before the flight mm -hmm. takes off. Mm -hmm. Right. And I like fucking clock the dudes hard. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I will even talk to them. B ask very, like, stat line, like, oh, yeah, um, how long is the flight today? Mm -hmm. Just to see if they're like, oh, it's, you know, if they're, if they're like, oh, it's about four and a half hours. I'm like, okay, he seems jovial, chill. Yeah. <laughs> but if it's like a weird, like, what? Um, uh, yeah, yeah uh, four hours. I'm like, look, stressed out about something. Don't like it. <laughs> Don't like it. And I'll report him. I'll lie. I'll say he fucking touched me. I'll be like, the pilot, <laughs> the pilot just touched me. I'm not getting on this flight. No one no. should. <laughs> no. No. I just, uh, of the number of excuses <laughs> that you could call with, you could say anything. Be like, I think he was drinking. You're like, he touched me. <laughs> the pilot, but clearly because he was drinking. Straight to molestation. <laughs> I get shit shut down, you know? Uh, I, but like, I, I, I but also, because, but yeah, yeah, but you know, no, flying, I don't mind. Like, mm. but I do, okay. <laughs> I get freaked out. I, I, it's just, and it's purely turbulence. I can't do. I, I trust the technology. Yeah. Not even the pilots, but just literally the bumpies. And yeah, I'll freak I mean out. that's the thing. Nobody likes that. Yeah, yeah. I don't even think seasoned pilots. Actually, as a child, it. I really did. You I, yeah, I was, was just like, it's a roller coaster, mom. Yeah. Yeah. I love this. It. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. No, I don't. I don't. I mean, it all. That's the thing. If it's turbulent as fuck, but I can look out the window and it's like a clear day, mm -hmm. I'm fine. Yeah, turbulence doesn't bother me at all. Sure. But if I'm in the middle, if I, that's the thing. I the reason I have to look out the window is because I just like to know in my limited understanding of aero, aeronautics. Mm -hmm. That's even a word. Uh, what's going on? Like if I look outside and I, it's bumpy as fuck, but we're going it's, and it's cloudy. Mm -hmm. Clouds to me in my, I might be wrong about this, but I think I'm right based on experience. Clouds to airplanes are what potholes are to cars. Yeah. Mm. While flying too, it's just bumpy. Yeah. yeah. If it's a clear, if it's clear out and it's turbulent, I know it's because of wind or whatever, or sure. front we're flying to. Uh, if it's raining or if the, if it's, yeah, I just like to be able to see mm -hmm. What's going on and understand it to my best ability. Sure. If I and if I can do that, I don't give a shit. Yeah. It could, we could be doing barrel rolls as long as I can understand why. Yeah. That's why I also hate it when pilots don't talk. Like talk to me. Yeah. Mm. Just tell if a pilot gets on and goes, uh, folks, we're going to be hitting a rough patch and I'm going to have to invert the plane, then do a nose dive, then just pull right back up and go higher than normal, fifty thousand feet. We're going to go fifty thousand feet. It's going to get crazy, folks. I'm fine with all every moment of that. <laughs> I don't give a shit. But if the pilot doesn't talk at all and we hit turbulence and the seatbelt line doesn't come on fast enough, yeah. I'm like, this fucking guy's checked out. He doesn't even give a shit that we're going through turbulence. And I'm freaking out full <laughs> fucking throttle. You could so, be like, as long as there's enemy fighters and he's like, we've got a, a hot six on our tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, folks, we've got a Bolivian rogue 
a rogue Bolivian air fighter yeah. uh, shooting missiles at us. Trying to start um, a war. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm as long try as he checks him. in. I'm like, yeah, that's great. Yeah, thanks, bud. Yeah. Yes, I will have uh, some some uh, a, a cookie. <laughs> Thank you. I will Thank have you. a Delta uh, cookie. Do you guys remember the first flight you ever took? Uh, no, but I can tell you the first flight where I got really afraid of flying. Oh, was interesting. I was by myself. Mm. How old are you? Flat. Probably eight, maybe nine. And oh, I was, shit. Yeah, you were yeah. flying it by yourself at eight? Yeah, cause, just because uh, my parents would send us out to Arizona for a week to stay with my grandparents. And so they would just take us to the airport, put us on the plane. They'll like have like a, a, a steward flight, flight yeah. attendant. Yeah, you know, that's escorting. crazy. I didn't know you could even do that yeah. that young. Okay, yeah. good to know. And uh, what was it? Yeah, just like a super, super bumpy flight. For, and to be alone on that. Oh, and I remember yeah. I was sitting next to two other kids who were like with their family and they were just so annoying. And I was like, well, this is the worst <laughs> day of my life. Oh, no. And then my grandmother, a historically cold woman. So I got there crying and she was just like, why are you upset? Oh, no. Why are you ruining our time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the bumps. <laughs> the bumpies. I didn't know if the plane, if we were going to land. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's like, I do not remember well, I, the first flight I ever took, but I, I, I know I was, I know I was five, mm. but I know my parents, we were going to Colorado. That's all I know. Mm. But I bet I fucking crushed it back then. I remember one time <laughs> I was on a flight from LA back to New York and the whole fucking like last hour and a half, mm -hmm. there's a kid behind me and he's like narrating the flight, if you will. Like, he's just like, he's like, uh, the pilot was like, all right, folks, we're about to make our descent into the New York area. And the kid's like, daddy, daddy, the fl the plane's going lower now. <laughs> and the dad's like, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And then like the flight would turn left and he was just like, daddy, daddy, we're turning left now. And it's like, <laughs> kid, we, we're all, yeah. We get it. <laughs> but then I remember, and this is a flight pattern that most flights that land, that fly from the West in a JFK, they go out over, the Atlantic mm -hmm. for a yeah. while yeah, yeah. so they could turn around and come back. Yep. I just remember this particular flight, it felt like we were going way the fuck out over the Atlantic, mm -hmm. right? Like too far. Yeah. And I was like, oh God, did the pilot die or is he like, are, you, are we going to crash <laughs> in the fucking Atlantic Ocean now? Is this it? And then the kids started being like, daddy, daddy, we're going out over the water and then we're going to turn around. And I was suddenly like, really? Like now I'm like, <laughs> this kid then, is the and, pilot. And then like right then the, the plane banked. He's like, see dad, 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 we're turning now. We're turning, we're <laughs> heading back towards the airport. And I'm like, are we? Is that, what, so that's what's happening? Like now I'm like into this kid. So I'm like, yeah, buddy. You're like, what oh, else is going to happen? Thank God for this kid. <laughs> like, are they going to put the wheels down? They do. Yes. Yeah. So. Well, no, he did. That was the next thing. When, <laughs> when you hear, sometimes you can hear the sure. of the wheels. Like, daddy, daddy, those were the wheels. And I'm like, they were, right? <laughs> that wasn't just us like dumping or dumping fuel because we're about to crash. We're going to land, right, kid? Now you just want this kid in the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah just like, <laughs> It's going to be hard to get up tomorrow, but it'll be okay. <laughs> oh, thank God. Thank Sean, God. Sean, they liked you. They're just not big laughers. <laughs> You're like, yeah, thanks, kid. Uh, Wait, where are you from? Ohio, Ohio. right? Yeah. yeah. So you flew... I knew that. Cincinnati boy. Yeah. Cincinnati well, boy. I lived in Cincinnati for like seven years, and that's where I started comedy, but I'm from the suburbs of Toledo. Uh, Ohio, oh. so like Northern Great Lakes, Midwest. Dude, I, I, yeah, okay, that's badass. I do actually think that Cincinnati is one of the most underrated cities. Oh yeah, in America, absolutely. It's yeah, a I like very Cincinnati fucking a lot. cool city. Yeah. It's a fun town. Uh, really good comedy. Uh, great comedy scene. Yeah, great comedy they, scene. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, it was great. But just like the setup of Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, this has happened to me four times in my life, but I will never forget the first time. And I don't remember the interstate. I love how I say I will never forget and then follow it immediately <laughs> don't by remember. But I don't remember. <laughs> but I'll never forget. I'm not sure what interstate it is where I you're bet coming. I know exactly what you're about Okay, to when you're Go coming ahead. up from the south into Cincinnati, like oh, you're yeah. coming up through Kentucky. Yes. The way the road turns, mm -hmm. Cincinnati just sneaks up on you. Pierce. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. It's a so, great, uh, it's a, you're going up 75 or, yeah, 75. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. So um, like it, the first time that happened, it's like driving, driving, and it's just woods and it's kind of hilly. Yeah. And then the road just naturally makes a right. And all of a sudden it's like Cincinnati yeah, yeah, yeah. right there <laughs> in front of you. Like, whoa, shit. Yeah. You can and, see like the football stadium, the baseball the stadium, whole, and then the mm, whole skyline. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. 
from like a skyline perspective, mm-hmm. it's a beautiful. Oh, well, it's great. It's a built on the river. Yeah, yeah. it's it's beautiful. Uh-huh. Yeah. I used to row in college. I was not good at it, but we would row on the Ohio River. Did you go oh, to cool. Cincinnati University? Of Cincinnati University, of Cincinnati. You yeah. did. You went there. Yeah. yeah. Was yeah. that a fun? Co- I've always wondered. Was that it like a- was a fun college? It was weird because uh, it would be like half commuter school and half like college college because a right. lot of kids that live in the area go there. But I loved it. It was cool, and you're in like. I was from the suburbs, so it, I was in like an urban area for the first time in my life. Yeah, it was like yeah. just an exposure to so many different things that I had never experienced before. Well, it's a massive ass school, though, right? It's like, yeah, it's like, very big. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's great. I think after Ohio State, it might be the largest public school. Caitlin, so okay, so that's probably what forty five thousand students ish. Yeah, Christ. Caitlin went to a school in where did you, in you went to Gambier, college? Ohio. Okay, very tiny town near Centerville, Centerburg. Okay. Yeah, all right. Kenyon College. Kenyon College, sixteen hundred students. Sixteen hundred. <laughs> <laughs> so so tiny. That's like some high schools. You know? Yeah, yeah. Oh. My yeah, high school that's... was bigger than my college. Oh my god. Yeah. That's I, I I am kind of envious of that. <laughs> well, I went to like a big public Los Angeles high school, so I wanted to go to like a tiny something college. Yeah, everybody wants the opposite of what they had. Mm-hmm. Sure. Wait, so you rode? Yeah, I was, and it happened because I it's it, at the University of Cincinnati because of Ohio Title IX sports. Right. You had like a certain number of varsity women's sports, but because they already had the. Uh, equipment and stuff like that they just had a men's rowing team that was a club sport mm. so anybody could get on ah. and it was my first two weeks of college i was super lonely and just like i, I remember i called my dad and i was like can i come home and he was like no <laughs> yeah, yeah this is part of it but yeah and then i had a friend from high school that was a coxswain and he was like yeah do you want to just come and try rowing and that's how i met all my friends oh that's cool yeah, bunch yeah. of row just a bunch yeah. of fucking I, big I rowed for motherfuckers. a semester okay. at oxford yeah. um during my graduate program and then i got tired of waking up at 5 a.m and uh, so i stopped i yeah. promise you nothing about that sentence was made to feel you feel inferior no no <laughs> it was just very like i rode for a year when i went to oxford <laughs> but i grew tired of waking up uh, on the right. crisp dew-covered mornings of <laughs> oxford england oh uh, Right. No, no, no. I, I don't. I don't. No, I'm not saying. I'm saying it was a very fun statement. I did like. Uh, I did have like all of my friends from the rowing team were like six foot four dudes. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember go, not like I just would, muscle muscular yes. back like muscular backs. Yes. And not. I would never go to a party to start shit. But it's college. It's hyper machismo. And yeah. Would be like, yeah. who the fuck are you? And then my friends would be behind me, and they'd be like. What's up, man? Yeah. Hello. Come in. <laughs> it's like, this is better. These That's guys, great. I call them the ore daddies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> These guys have giant pieces. They, they row giant sticks through water all day. They fucking cut through you, pal. <laughs> yeah. Row through you like the Ohio River on a calm Sunday morning. Yeah. And we would, we would row on the Ohio before the sun came up. So you would be <laughs> going down that downtown area and it's yeah. all lit up. And it would be the fucking best. I mean, it sucks to get up that early, but then you would just have moments where you're like, oh my God, this is like surreal. Yeah. That's cool. Be like on water level looking up at like a lit up skyline. I love that. I'm, I also love the idea of talking shit and then it like venturing into almost poetic and just sort of being like, motherfucker, if you step to me, I will engage you and slice through you like the American dream <laughs> slices through the psyche of your average human being realizing ultimately that dreams are our only existence <laughs> and that existence is nothing more than a living dream that like, is one way to end a fight it's, like, Whoa, it's almost like a Wait, what is, uh, Muhammad Ali uh, method of like, yeah, yeah. That was his forte you know yeah. well and obviously one of the greatest also fighters then, of all yeah, time could then hit you six times yeah before you felt the first punch. Mm-hmm. Like, did you just hit me six times before you hit me? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Motherfucker, I will smack you so hard, it will feel like the cold, hard dose of reality where you realize childhood was a lie. <laughs> and we were all being prepared for adulthood, which in all essence is pain. So this should not hurt. It should actually feel good. <laughs> what? What did you say? I'm opened up now. I'm a real, I'm a man now? Yeah. That's pretty, okay, yeah, Cincinnati, Cincinnati and Pittsburgh have this similar vibe to mm-hmm. me, where it, it, they both felt like they were being built street by street in the sense where it, like, it, every, like, when you get into, like, the over the Rhine neighborhood, mm-hmm. or around there, it just feels like it wasn't made by developers who are trying to build a fucking 
like a pop up city. Yeah. I mean, I, it's an older town. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. and I know that's like, well, that's how most cities are built, but you got a lot of places in America. You especially said you spent summers in Arizona. <laughs> mm-hmm. That there, There's there's t- parts of Arizona where it's like, so was this entire city built in the same day? Yeah. Was Scottsdale built in the same day? <laughs> it does feel like it yeah. was. They hired yeah. one neighborhood developer. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Built, we'll just built keep an this. entire neighborhood. Yeah. Where it's like, over the Rhine just feels like it was built block by block with mm-hmm. a different goal in mind. True. Yeah. Well, it was all like, uh, I think like all almost entirely Germans and like yeah. just old school Germans like emigrating and moving further into the States. And that's like, pretty, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. I like the, I like that. Like, I, I, I truly love like a, I love a hilly, cold, old city. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So I love most of Europe, sure. but like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I like and it. it's, uh, I grew like Northwest Ohio where I'm from is just the flattest fucking place on the planet. Mm. Just farm. It's like suburbs. And then you get to the outskirts of town and it's farmland for as far as you can see. And as a kid, you just look at it and you're like, what is, <laughs> this is making me so sad. <laughs> so anytime I go anywhere with like hills or mountains, I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. Yes. I love that. Yeah. I what wait? What did your parents do that they raised you in Toledo? Uh, uh-huh. they were my dad was a surgeon and my mom was an ER nurse. Oh, so, yeah. My they, now, how did they meet? And they, you're a comedian. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, in North Carolina, my mom grew up there, and my dad went to do his residency at the hospital that my mom was a nurse at in North Carolina. And nice. then after he got done with his residency, he got a job offer, offer in Toledo, Ohio. I was kind of hoping you'd be like, well, strangely enough, they're playing racquetball, <laughs> <laughs> right? And she, and she started talking shit to him, and it became a gender thing, and then suddenly, like, how about some one-on-one? And they, you know, tied. They never, they, that game ended 75 to 75. And that's just how it went. And, but during the shit talking, they both were like, I'm a surgeon. She's like, really? I'm a nurse. And then they got to talking. <laughs> like, they met in a way that had nothing to do yeah, with yeah, nothing. <laughs> Wait, was your dad like an ER surgeon? Uh, no, just a general surgeon. I think, um, yeah, just, I don't know. The way I tell it is like anything from here to here. Yeah. Or like from neck to waist. Yeah. Torso. He takes a lot of stuff out, takes out gallbladders, appendixes. He did. He's retired now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'll just, I'll dig in there. Whatever's not working, I'll yeah. get out of there. I'll check it out. He's yeah. got a real mechanic vibe. It's like too. a mechanic, <laughs> a human mechanic, basically. Yeah. Is what He like knocks on your belly. He's like, eh, it sounds fine. <laughs> <laughs> a couple more miles. He kicks your knee. You're like, it's like a, you gotta know. I know if it's got any. Yeah. Can, He's like, I forgot my hammer. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's crazy, man. That's like, yeah. Growing like my mom. My mom is my mom retired. She's retired. Yeah, she works part time though. Yeah, she does. Like, yeah, my mom was a nurse as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, like nurse moms. Wait, tell everybody how your parents met because it's an adorable story. Oh, they were born next door to one another. No, my parents have known each other since existence, since they were born. Really, my parents, That's have, so my cute. parents are the <laughs> same age, born the same year. Shared a wall. Shared in, sh- in a double shotgun. Yeah, they house. lived in a their their families lived in a shotgun house, shotgun style house in New Orleans, in the Lower Ninth. Yeah. So it's on charters. So sure. it's like a you know what a shotgun house is? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, like they grew up in the same building uh-huh. and have known each other since knowing another human being is possible. Were they sweethearts or did they like, uh, at some point in their life, they were like, oh. Well. My mom, my mom, my dad's version is that they were sweethearts since they were kids. Uh-huh. My mom's version is they didn't actually start dating till high school. Yeah. And uh, they just never looked back. Sure. But um, That's kind of sweethearts though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But my dad makes it sound like they, it was like, he I knew when knew. I was six. And my <laughs> mom was like, I didn't fucking care about Timmy until he was, until <laughs> he had a car. <laughs> that's how my mom would say, until he had a car. Yeah, because that's how. That's, uh, that's. Uh, the, yeah, like uh, people, the New Orleans accent sound, I mean, I, I talk about it on stage, but it sounds infinitely more like a New Jersey accent. I uh, than, feel like. Than like a Southern accent or a uh, Cajun accent. My mom's from North Carolina. Yeah. So coastal Piedmont area. And it's not the same as New Orleans, but there is one similarity and it's that dropping of the R's on the end. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. So they don't say like uh, over there, you know, they're yeah. like over there. Over there. Yeah. And it's, it's. So much more fun than like a Kentucky. Southern, yeah, you know? yeah. It's it's like it's like a New Orleans accent. It's sort of like it's like this sort of everything's like kind of rounded out. Like mm-hmm. the city itself's like a bowl. Yeah, you make all you were and just kind of it's like nasally, but not like my area code of the where I grew up in Slide, Louisiana, mm-hmm. and of my current. I still have my fucking old phone number, but it's nine eight five. That's the new. That's the area code. A New Orleans person would pronounce it nine eight five. 
like the words are like drunk. Yeah. Like all your words are just kind of chilling because they fucked up. Yeah. You know, like in New Orleans. New yeah. Orleans. That's like when people go New Orleans, I'm like, no, it's New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah. They yeah. say the new. Yeah. No one goes New Orleans. Yeah. New Orleans. Everything's very, very relaxed, especially the deeper south you get. It's more oh, like yeah. mm-hmm. flowy language yeah. and stuff like that. I'm always, can you do, and I, I'm only asking because I am obsessed with this accent. Can either of you do the Philly accent? I don't no. even know. I don't even know. It's so it's hard. It's weird. Talking, but hearing it, I'm just like, that's dude, so crazy. Dude, like Philadelphia, dude. Philadelphia, go to watch the Phillies on TV. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's so hard. <laughs> so weird. Like, hard, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I don't even think of doing it right. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's like your words are like jumping or something. Like yeah. they're jumping and hitting the, they're hitting their heads on the roof of your mouth. I was at, <laughs> what's that? I think it's Fuck. called Reading Market in Philly, or the, the big market in the downtown area where there's a bunch of different food styles. I asked the lady, I was like, where's the, do you know where the restroom is? And she's like, yeah, he's going to go down there and take a rock. <laughs> yeah, it's what? so hard to. <laughs> yeah. It's like he all your is. words are like shy. Like they want to go back in your mouth as soon as you say yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those, the O sounds just kill me. <laughs> Oh. Oh, those are super weird I had a friend in Chicago who grew up in Philly and then like lived in Baltimore for a while and the Baltimore like, accent's impossible it was so Baltimore. weird Baltimore. his Baltimore. accent was so bizarre yeah Tuesday. the only ones I know are like Tuesday yeah. Wednesday yeah. yeah yeah. I mean like yeah that's that's what, how my dad sounds he's from Texas well that's what's Tuesday fucking, oh Tuesday yeah Tuesday that's what's great that's one of the many great things about the television series The Wire is that they cast like actual Baltimore natives sure. yeah. to keep the fucking accent yes. yeah. like authentic. Because mm-hmm. there's a couple of characters where you're like, damn, that is not you were not coached. <laughs> yeah. That's how you talk. Mm-hmm. You talk like that. Like the one of the one of the chiefs was I, I, it's it's not Kansas City Chiefs, one of the police chiefs. Anyway, that's that's a, that's a dumb <laughs> Kansas City accent. You know that one? Just uh, uh, uh that's them loving the Indians. Kansas, that's just how they talk. Oh, no. yeah, that's, Kansas City is a uh, an underrated city as well. I think there's yeah. some cool shit in Kansas City. Yeah, yeah. Midwest towns are fun. The Midwest like, is underrated yeah. as a whole. Like, I will forever. I I love New York and like I I, I yeah. do like being a coastal elite. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like anytime somebody finds out I'm from Ohio and they're like, I'm sorry. I'm like, well, no, go fuck yourself. I'll probably go back there <laughs> well, at some point and buy wrong. a ranch. Yeah. yeah like Dave great. Attell lives in, or Dave Chappelle lives in fucking yeah. Yellowknife, Ohio. Yeah. Yes. You know what great I mean? Great name for a town. Yeah. <laughs> Yellowknife. <laughs> but like, I think it's Yellowknife, right? It's, yeah, it's somewhere, it's like some small town. Yeah, it might be know. Yellow Springs. Or Yellow Springs. Yeah. Uh-oh. It's somewhere, <laughs> but it's something like he lives <laughs> wild, wildly different. Yeah. 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 Yellowknife. Yeah. Yellow, Yellow, Yellow Springs. Springs. <laughs> yeah. They're two neighboring towns. Yeah, 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 just different types, man. <laughs> those yellow, those yellow springs, p- p- uh-huh. pansies over there crying. There ain't even a spring. We call them springs because of tears. They're liberal <laughs> fucking Because we keep getting kids. stabbed. Keep, yeah, and they're like, well, stop stabbing us. <laughs> I, I thought, it. well, I just, well, just let us come to your goddamn barbecues. We didn't want to be invited. <laughs> this is all a misunderstanding. <laughs> let us come watch Dave. <laughs> <laughs> what he does, uh, but like the... Yeah, well, dude, like, I, the Midwest is my favorite region of the United States to perform, Mm -hmm. and there is a reason. It does not have a fucking agenda, Mm -hmm. right? That's what the, like, I love living in New York. I love California, but... Those cit- cities on the coast have a, vag- a agenda. <laughs> they have a agenda. Which, is the, which means they're either trying to do things to get laid or trying to do things in the name of the vagina. <laughs> a vagina. Agenda. <laughs> wow. That was a Freudian, that was a Freudian slap. <laughs> Slap right on the ass. Uh, Kaylin, how many edibles did you have today? Just one. <laughs> <laughs> just one. <laughs> you're, you're so hard. Yeah, you're are you really? Yeah. Wait, are you both? Did you both no, have edibles? No. This is our jam. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. Yeah, I was sitting there being like, what is happening? Oh, I'm so glad it's out in the open. Yeah. yeah. Well, now you can just relax. Yeah. <laughs> can, or can you? I don't you, know. Because you're laughing in that way. Only people who are super high laugh. Where you're, where there's like no, yeah. <laughs> yeah now you got the giggles. <laughs> that <one hurts. laughs> now I'm gonna laugh at how much you're laughing. But you're okay, la- getting it together. You're All laughing right. in that that highway yeah. where it's like, oh, my whole body is in on this. Yeah, like my my sure. the heels of my feet are I part was, of the laughter. I was just talking about this where I can't get high, like I'll freak out too much. But, me too. But what is fun to me when you hit that sweet spot 
is that you do get that like borderline yeah. nervous <laughs> laughter where it goes yeah. hand in hand with your anxiety where you're like, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen, but the tension is making me laugh yeah. so hard right now. And it's, it's, I do a good good. high laugh spell. Oh. What? <laughs> like I'm saying where it feels like you're laughing from every atom in your body. Yes. Like your hair. You yes. feel like I'm laughing you're from my tired hair. tired afterwards. Yeah, yeah, like you're like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I could take a nap. I just laugh so hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Also, you look very high, but in a fun yeah. way. Well, you also have a little bit of uh, teary eyedness now. From yes. That laughing. Uh, yes, yeah. I was crying. Caitlin's new thing is edibles. <laughs> yeah. I'm into them. Edibles yeah. are pretty good. Yeah. I mean, for, for you. Sure. I'd yes. freak the fuck out and just be like, hey, can I just can we go outside? Can we just walk? Can yeah. we just walk and do the podcast? Let's just take a walk. Can we? This is mobile. We can. That's always my thing for, for my like my your, my primitive way I combat anxiety is movement. Mm-hmm. Like I don't like to like if I'm if I'm having a panic attack I cannot be confined. That's what I. The you last gotta, like, time let me walk. Let me just walk this off. Yeah. yeah. The last time I did mushrooms, it was just walking the whole time. Just thirty thousand steps. Yeah. It didn't, <laughs> it didn't go to my liking, but I was like, all right, well, I'm just gonna move and just walked around Central Park. For, we had um, Carmen Lagala. Yes. Yeah, she was on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yes. Do you guys ever? Did you guys do mushrooms together? I can't remember if she's like a person who does mushrooms. No, she yeah. took. Uh, we had a bag of mushrooms, yeah. and I was like, "You should do like half." I think it was like an eighth, and I was like, "You should do no more than half of these." And why don't you do them? And I'll just be with you, right? Mm-hmm. And nothing's gonna happen. You know, you'll be fine. And then I think what we realized, because we're not, neither of us is like seasoned drug yeah. takers. We had had that bag of mushrooms for so long that oh, it just no. gave her a bellyache. And oh, okay. yeah, oh no. Like, well, I was like, yeah, like, it didn't do anything. So we were like, well, clearly we can handle it. So then we just did some fucking hardcore liquid ass. <laughs> <laughs> but one time Caitlin went to the wood, a cabin in the woods with her college friends to trip acid. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I was on the phone with her and she's like, it's fine. I don't even really feel anything. We're talking. At one point she goes, huh. Water. <laughs> I was like, what? She's like, I don't know, just water, you know? I was just, I was... Staring into a glass of water. I like, was watching ah. water come out of a faucet. Oh, that's I was like, it it's so weird that we have pipes and someone figured out plumbing. And I was like, oh, I'm definitely high now. <laughs> yeah. And that's an actual, that, that's like a very practical trippy thought. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, that was the start of it. Yeah, because that, that, that easily turns into, I mean, that's all veins are, man, plumbing. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, shit, is anybody living in me? Yeah. Who, my thoughts, my thoughts are my, so I'm earth, thoughts are the people, and there's a lot of them, man. Yeah. And they're just not vibing right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's war, oh, there's a war, <laughs> there's a war going on. No. <laughs> oh, wait, now it's a peace time, man. I'm going through the Renaissance period. Yeah. On my planet. This mm-hmm. is that is it. It's like a yeah. thousand thoughts per minute yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like very aware of. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it fries my brain a little bit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, the, and that's the thing. Like we when you grew well, growing up, mm. what in what was what was your play, what was your hometown again? Yellow. Perrysburg, Ohio. <laughs> per- <laughs> yellow night. <laughs> yeah. Yellow, yellow snatch. Uh, Wait, <laughs> every town in Ohio yeah, is yellow. Yellow, yellow something. Uh, Wait, Perrysburg? Perrysburg, Ohio. So was it like, were you like, were you and your friends, were you like, we're going to get fucked up because there's nothing else to do? Or was it like more of a, oh yeah, okay. It was a fucked up, because, or not even fucked up, but like, we're going to drive around and smoke cigarettes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So cool. There was, we were, we were on uh, the Maumee River in Ohio, which comes out of Lake Erie, and, and there was a, a landing <laughs> air parking <laughs> the lot. Maumee <laughs> the Maumee River? The Maumee, yeah. Spelled M-A-U-M-E. It okay. sounds like I'm saying Maumee. Yeah. yeah. The Maumee River comes out of Lake Daddy. <laughs> like, <laughs> 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 and your little shishy queek. <laughs> and brother. Uh, brother puddle. <laughs> brother Good puddle. Banning. Brother puddle. Brother puddle. Right? <laughs> yeah. uh, we would just go to like a boat landing at night that like was had emptied out because nobody's yeah. going on the water. And we would just like go down there and either get high or smoke cigarettes or maybe drink a little bit. And mm. that was like our spot. Yeah. And that's one cool. of you would jump. So cool. Would you get in the water? Uh, I think a couple times yeah. somebody did. Because that's always out. a fun thing to introduce when you're a teenager and you're fucked up. Like, water! It's oh safe. Oh my God. Let's get it, jump into a body of water. Yeah. That's the same thing here, growing up in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Like, we'd, you'd end up near a boat launch or on like a river or yeah. like in the woods near a fucking something. And you were like, or 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 just a lot, everybody had a fucking pool. Oh, a yeah. lot of them were above ground. Mm-hmm. But it was always like, we're fucked up. Let's get in water. Yeah. And I think that's your body. Your body's because your body, our we're like what eighty percent water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when we're fucked up, we deplete our bodies of mm-hmm. water. So our bodies naturally mm-hmm. want more water mm-hmm. while we're loaded. So it 
So yeah, consciously, yeah, yeah. I'm making all this up I as I go. But it's <laughs> a comfort thing, though, too, because yeah. like you're born, you know, you're in water, right? Yeah, true. Yeah. True. So. You're born. I mean, now I just want to get in a hot tub. I know, right? I want to go swim. The uh, first time I ever went, I was really religious growing up. I wasn't allowed to celebrate Halloween. What? What? Yeah. Yeah. what? Yeah. So the first time I went trick or treating, I was 16 years old. I wrote my dad a letter. Which is too old. Yes. Exactly. 100%. It's way too old. And so I got high as fuck, put on like a lady's wig and just like a rug poncho and was just bloodshot eyes. And That's the most terrifying <laughs> it was Halloween costume I've <laughs> ever... A fucking 16-year-old high doing this for the first time yeah. while yes. stressing. <laughs> yeah. And just like seemingly floating from my yeah. perspective to how, door to door. And people were like, you're... How old are you? And I would just be like, this is my first time. And, yeah. and it was just like a staring contest until they gave me a game. What's your costume? My bitch mother. <laughs> my perception of Wait, my Wait, you mom. went alone? I was with uh, two of my buddies. Oh, okay. Now, were they eight-year-olds? Did you? <laughs> I, was like, I went and made guys, friends. Be cool. <laughs> be cool. Like, like you're, you're, you're like Robin Williams in that movie Jack when he's like old. And yeah. he, I don't know he, that I ever saw this one. Uh, it's the reverse aging one. It's kind of like the curious case of Ben. No, no, it isn't. No, no. I believe it's advanced aging. Yes, you're yeah, right. So he just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like nine, but is physically he's like 36. He hits Got on it. his teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's played by J-Lo. I could be wrong. Could be wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could, be. could be wrong. But yeah, uh, that's yeah. just what I, the image I have is just a grown up you like, twig a tweet. <laughs> Wait. So, what religion is this? It's just uh, like a uh, like a form of Protestantism. The denomination's called uh, Christian Missionary Alliance. So it's like your standard church, church, but there's an emphasis placed on missions. So when I was a kid, maybe like once or twice a year, I would have missionaries staying at my house while they were like back in the states mm. soliciting funds. Right, right. So they right. would come and preach for a week. They would bring like a bunch of stuff from like. I don't know, Gabon in Africa or like yeah. Thailand or whatever. And they're just trying to raise money for their mission. Yeah. I just love the idea of like when you lost your virginity, like we have to do a doggy style or any other position than missionary. Yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't be around goddamn yeah. mission. The idea of just mission, yeah. anything it's, can't, can't watch. So turns me off. Yeah. Can't watch mission impossible. Any of them. Yeah. <laughs> if I was raised in the church yeah. of reverse cowgirl, this wouldn't be an issue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I go to San Francisco, I can't go to the mission district. <laughs> <laughs> no goddamn missions. <laughs> I just want to be mission free, motherfucker. <laughs> no, wait, that's that's crazy, dude. Mm, yeah. yeah, mission. So wait, but you said, are you are you still religious in any way? No, not really. I'm very. I just like. Uh, I don't know. I'm probably an atheist, but I just you know, how can you know? I'm just agnostic. Just for like, yeah, I got, I'm, yeah, I'm busy. Are yeah. your parents still religious? Yeah, very. But it's really interesting. My uh, after Trump got elected, my dad because it's e- it's an evangelical Christian denomination, mm-hmm. right? right? You're like actively trying to convert people. After Trump got elected, my dad saw the breakdown of how many evangelicals voted for Trump, and he was like, "Oh, I'm I'm out." Like, I'm done. Wow. And he is now, uh, it's like an Orthodox, it's like Coptic, Orthodox Coptic church or something like that, where they like wave uh, uh, like uh, incense and there's like chanting and it's a cappella hymn. It sounds like your dad's oh. in the ayahuasca. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he really just wants like a religious uh, yeah, trip. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, he, and it was a, it was like a thing for him and my mom because my mom is still evangelical. And uh, and they're fine, but she was just like, "What the fuck?" Is that what evangelical means? Act like actively recruiting. Uh, yeah, I think so. Wow, like, overtly trying to win over followers. Um, sort of like uh, hellfire and brimstone yeah. sermons. It wasn't I, too bad, right? When I was up, but yeah, I guess I mm-hmm. always figure I, evangelical. I just thought meant like. Extra religious, which is which kind is what of, it is. Yeah, yeah it's like kind of super, like supersized religious. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's the kind of church where they they don't call it being a Christian; they call it having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Oh, oh sure, yeah. Ugh, that makes me want to vomit. Yeah, exactly. This. Which you know, G- Jesus comes over, and there's a lot of we do a lot of missionary mission. Yeah. There's a lot of mission. Uh, Jesus, the, his <laughs> yeah. mission yeah. is to come over. It his ma- agenda. <laughs> his, <laughs> his Christian agenda. His Christian agenda. It makes it sound like you're like a teenager, like talking about it, where you're like, well, I don't want to put labels on it, but Jesus and I have a, a personal thing. So relationship. It's a relationship. Totes. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, all right. Well, speaking of that, yeah. I just looked. I just noticed. You're right. Yeah. Time to we get the so mm. Sam. Mm. You might we wrote them down for you. Yeah. Um, if you could tell us your story mm. in five words. Mm. Now wait. I'm so, now. I'm so sorry. Are you guys guessing my story or am I? We're no, gonna no. guess your story, but you have to say the five words. Oh, okay. That's mm-hmm. right. Okay. So my five words: mm-hmm. lollipop, lock, right, barricade, right, shower, mm-hmm. right, security. Cool. All right, so this um, little-known fact about Sam Evans is his great-great-grandfather, mm-hmm. uh, Sam Evans, the, also Sam Evans. Um, <laughs> they didn't. I, what I appreciate about your family is that you guys didn't put numbers behind it. Mm-hmm. You're like, you, we're just all Sam Evans. We're all the same. We're family. Yes. Um, uh, your great-great-grandfather uh, was a member of the Lollipop Guild, you mm-hmm. know, and that was the classic American culture, culture icons they were. Right? The Lollipop Guild? Exactly. Yes, exactly. Now, where where were they from again? The film... What film was that? Kansas. No. Yeah. No. Wizard, Wizard of Oz. Oz. Yeah. They were from Oz. Right, they were from Oz. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So? Uh, which everyone knows is uh, Australia, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, the Lollipop Guild decided that they were going to bury a time capsule for their great-great-grandchildren to one day dig up. Right. And so you gather... Uh, your crew of great great grandchildren of the lollipop guild, <laughs> <laughs> and you find the spot and you start digging it up. But there is a lock on. A lock, of course, um, one of a kind. It's a lollipop style lock. So yes. the only way to uh, unlock it is to lick it and accurately <laughs> say the flavor. <laughs> and you know. Uh, and suddenly, like, all right, which one of us has the best taste buds, right? Mm-hmm. And you, knowing you have the best, and this is the thing everybody knows about the Evans family, but, like, <laughs> you're like, you know, I can... Known I can, for their right, taste buds. I, like, we are known for our taste buds. That's why my grandfather designed this specific t- style <laughs> of lock. So you got in there, and you just start licking, and you're like, hmm, lime cherry, and then it clicks once. So you're mm-hmm. right. And you're like, do it! But, of course... You can't just peacefully open up this lollipop guild mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, time capsule because the press <laughs> has gotten word of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now they're fucking showing up mm-hmm. trying to snap pictures of like, oh, great grandson of lollipop guild members about mm-hmm. to unlock a time capsule from the 30s. Yep. Right? <laughs> so you got to, they got to form a barricade. Everyone else got to farm a fucking barricade. Sure. Yeah. Right? <laughs> they got to farm a barricade. Farm, they got to farm a barricade. They got to form a barricade. Right? <laughs> so. You guys form a barricade. Uh, there's more and more press coming. It's starting to get a little hectic, and you're like still like you're licking. licking the lollipop. Cherry, okay. And it's clicking, and everything Peach is banana, in a frenzy, you know? and then it starts to shower, to rain, and every, everything is getting messy. <laughs> yes. That makes it even worse, because now the rain, you're like, I got to lick this before the rain. Yeah. Now the rain's getting in there, and the, the flavors, and then you get a lick of that last flavor, and you know what it is. You're in Evans. You're never wrong with your taste buds. But you, in that moment, realize, like, hey, like, all this press here, and why are we doing this? Mm-hmm. You know? Isn't it the memory of our grandparent, great-grandparents that were in this guild that's more important than whatever's in this box? So you never say the last flavor. You just put it right back in the dirt and go, sorry, guys. I don't know. Walk away. He used the last word. And what is the last word? Security. Oh, no. Oh. And then security has to show up and, <laughs> and escort all the press away and everyone out of there because you're on private land and luckily they and they all get arrested, obviously. Yeah. You of course got you also got away before everyone else got arrested. Sure. So you don't even know what happened to them. Sure. And but you never know what's in the box. You'll never know what's in the box. But I think you I personally think you did the right thing. But Sam, can you tell us now what was that last flavor? <laughs> Coconut. Coconut. Right? Oh my How God. Of course just, it was. You'd think that'd be the first one. Mm-hmm. So basically that was a story about how <laughs> you and a bunch of other grand great grandchildren of members of the Lollipop Guild <laughs> found a time got the time capsule that had to be opened by taste. <laughs> and in the frenzy of rain and paparazzi, you said no. I'm, we're going to just remember them for who they were and not whatever's in this goddamn box. 
<laughs> you nailed the story. I mean, that's yes. it. It's pretty great. It's I pretty do. great how on point we were. Yeah, <laughs> you nailed it. That was it. I think that I think we got it. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, this would be a moment if you just story. suddenly just like produce like this artifact. You're like, this is what was in the <laughs> oh box. Even if God. I just yeah. had a lollipop in my pocket, you'd be like, Get it's just all of their foreskins. <laughs> <laughs> just treasure. Look what you did to us. <laughs> you bastards. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what's the real story? The the story, it's funny because we I kind of already touched base on it. Okay. I'm in Denver. This is like 2015, I think. Good year. Doing the Crom Comedy Festival in Denver. Ah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I go, it's my first time in Denver since they have legalized pot there. Mm-hmm. Oh. And so I go, this is back when I'm taking chances, and I'm like, I'll be a high guy. <laughs> and I get an edible lollipop. Mm. And I went. I went to the guy, and I was. I was excited because I was just like, "Hey, I freak out a lot, and I don't want to smoke it." And he was like, "These, my man, these are good." Mm. Yeah. yeah, but it's like, you, what he didn't say was like, "You're still gonna freak out. Yeah. <laughs> You're just not gonna smoke anything. It's not gonna <laughs> not happen. <Yeah. laughs> You're always gonna. Re- it yeah. might be a more you thing, yeah. than a lollipop." And I, uh, I didn't make any kind of like arrangements to like stay. Uh, and so last minute, I'm just like, you know what? I'm only here for like the one night. I'm just going to get a hotel. So I go to the Hilton at like 1230. You know what I mean? Because I found a good deal. And then I'm checking. A.M. or P.M.? Uh, A.M. Excuse me. Like a. M. morning. Morning. Yeah, yeah. After shows. After shows, after hanging out. And I'm just like, I just need a place to sleep. Oh, okay. Like, oh, yeah. fuck. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So I go. Uh, I check in. And it's. The guy isn't that weird, looking back on it, no. but because I'm high at this point, because I've had <laughs> yeah. some of the lollipop, he's like pale enough and awkward enough. He's just who you would put on a midnight shift. Right, 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 right. But I'm like, this guy, he's fucking after me. There's something. What? This is, this is, <laughs> he's I am right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is his. Something I said on stage offended him. Yeah, yeah. He was at my show. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he wasn't not even in this shitty. He saw me in New York. Yeah. Followed, followed me here. He got a job here. Yeah. Knowing that I this would come. This is a sting here. operation. Yes. One man sting. I, this, of course. <laughs> yeah. So I check in to the hotel room and I look, I'm already, it's still in my brain, so I, I lock the deadbolt and then I look for the chain lock. There's no chain lock, but I can see that it was there. There's still like screw holes on the door and the wall. So in my mind, I'm like, well, that's it. That's this guy's game. That's he checks people into rooms where he's removed the chain lock and then he sneaks in. He's uh, actually, he, they, call, they call it the kill room. Yeah, the kill he's room. He's got that at 115. That's you're going, oh, you're room. still checking in the kill room. Yeah, Guess yeah. what? You never check out. Yeah, he's like, I'm sure you'll sleep well. Wink. Yeah. <laughs> and and by well, I mean forever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. I am freaking out, but I'm like, I got all right, I got to sleep. So what I do is I fully barricade my hotel room door. I move like a chair and an ottoman, and I like brace those two things against, because you come into the hotel, and there is the bathroom door right next to the front door. So I brace that next to the bathroom door frame. Right. So I make it tight. And I put on the do not disturb thing. Oh, you're you're doing you're actively. I'm like I'm like, like no. This is gonna... the barricade part of yeah. this story. Yes. Yeah. I, am, I am not yeah, yeah, yeah. gonna be killed by yeah. anybody tonight. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, so I just I put that on and then I and then I put on TV and, and I just fall asleep and I, I sleep well because I'm like, you know what? I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Nothing's gonna happen to me. Right. I wake up the next morning, uh, have another lollipop, because I bought two of them. And the first one just threw you into an extreme paranoia about being murdered by the <laughs> like, Why not? Like, Round two. Let's House do it one. again. <laughs> See, in my mind, I'm like, ah, but I'm crafty. So the killers can't kill me. He's <laughs> making me better. Yeah, yeah. Especially when I have my superpower, Candy. <laughs> yeah. So I have another one. High as a kite in the shower. I actually have a shower bath. That's how good I've gotten. And then I just uh, put the plug in and oh. the shower's filling. And I'm like, this is great. It's the best of both worlds. And you took a bath in a hotel? A shower that's, into a bath. That's the scariest thing I've heard. This do you whole, not do that? Oh yeah. I just I just know what I've done in some of those showers. So you're like, <laughs> I'll never, never again. <laughs> uh, I get here a pounding on the door. Yeah. Of course. And I go to answer it. 
I look through the, and I am very high at this point. I look through the peephole right. and I see two guys. And this is like the worst thing to see when you are high because my paranoia is like, there's people coming for me. Yeah. It's generally like a nondescript, but someone will come to get me. And I look through and I see two guys in black suits with earpieces. Mm -hmm. Terrifying. And I'm like, well, yeah. this is, I'm, I'm done. It's the cops. It's yeah. weed is legal in Denver now. And I'm like, they caught me. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. But lollipops aren't. Yeah. Lolly weed <laughs> itself yeah. is, but yeah. any yeah. other version. Yeah. Oh, you didn't read line yeah. uh, section 24C yeah, of yeah. the law? Well, yeah. you're going to jail. And so I, I move the shit. Right. Like I, I de-barricade my door. Uh, I'm pulling on pants. I'm like getting dressed as this is happening. He's pounding. I open the door and it's hotel security. And the guy just looks at me. He's like, why was this door barricaded? And I immediately, <laughs> it doesn't occur to me oh. that I can just fess up and be like, oh, I was high. There's no chain lock. And I got, so I just go, oh, uh, I get nervous in hotels. That's oh, just man. all I say. Which to him. makes him go, now we have probable cause. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. So the guy that he's with is pulling on, I remember this vividly, he's pulling on latex gloves. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, what? And then I, I'm like, they think I did. And I was like, do you, do you want to come in and make sure everything's okay? I'm, there's nothing going on in here. Come in. So the guy just goes past me. And the other guy is, he starts off very pissed off. And then he's, I think he realizes I'm high. Because yeah. <laughs> he's just like, we had to call the police. This is that. Nah, 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 nah. And I was what? like, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I just got nervous. He's, his guy like looks in the bathroom, sees everything's fine. And I was like, do you want me to talk to the cops? I'll talk to whomever. Yeah. And he's like, I'll hold him off. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> cooled off in 30 seconds. I get it, bro. Yeah. Or, or the edible he just eaten had just kicked in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, fuck. Wait, how did they know the door was barricaded? Though? Exactly. Because yeah. I had on the do not disturb sign. But there was a maid there. And this was what was crazy about it was there was a maid behind them. So I think that she came in, even though she shouldn't have. Yeah. Mm. But then I also see as this whole interaction is going, people are like opening their hotel room doors next to mine. Like oh, he weird. was knocking so loud. The whole floor is like looking. Like, <laughs> Everything's fine. I mean, dude, that's have, I like, first of all, this was a hotel where the door you enter from inside a building. Not like motel style where it's like when you open your door, you're outside. Yeah. It's in a interior hallway. Right. I, I, I don't, I, I, I prefer those. Mm -hmm. I don't like motel style, even like ACE hotels, which are all old. I'm like, nah, I don't like, yeah, I don't know. but, um, yeah, dude, that, uh, that's fucking hilarious. Cause I feel like you could have been like the, the guy downstairs last night, mm -hmm. he was going to kill me, man. Yeah. And they'd have been like, fuck Jeff. <laughs> this is why Jeff can't work midnight, man. <laughs> Guy freaks people out. He's got oh, yeah, a crazy vibe. Weird. Yeah. Dude, that's, oh man, that's funny. Cause yeah. I've been, I've been those other people before. Really? When it's like a banging of a door and you're like, what's going on? And it's someone like, we're fine in here. Yeah. It's like, sir, I need you to both come out. And it's like, he, we're fine. And then some weeping woman comes sure. up behind yeah. him, like, it's okay. And, and like, I think they're yeah. expecting yeah. like a weeping or bloodied lady. And I'm like, I didn't know. But, but, but they didn't know that the weeping woman is inside of me. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I am the weeping you woman. Are the weeping. <laughs> Dude, one time when, when I was doing that show, Best Bars in America, mm -hmm. uh, we filmed this. I don't think it ever made it onto an episode. To the It was in New Orleans, to the New Orleans episode, because I was... Jay and I were fucking wang dang hammered. And this was like a last minute edition where they were like, Hey, you guys need to go interview the, the, the receptionist at this hotel in the French quarter. We're mm -hmm. like, why? He's like, he's a vampire you know, and he's willing to talk about it. And we we're like, okay, that's good. But we're fucking <laughs> waxed. But I remember we're like interviewing the guy and he's like a legit vampire. And we kept eat, we kept asking him about like, Wait, what? Is, I'm confused. Yes, he has fang teeth. And he, would, he drinks blood. He was like, <laughs> yeah, he was like, I'm a living vampire, uh, and he he wouldn't discuss feeding habits, which made it creepier every time he said it. he's like, I will not discuss feeding habits. Ooh. But we're like, so are you undead? And he's like, no, I'm alive, but I'm a vampire. I practice, and we're like, you turn into a bat and shit. He's like, no, but I'm a human vampire. But <laughs> but he's just, it was really lame and dorky. Uh -huh. And then we're like, do you have fangs? And he's like, I have them, but I only show them if I'm presenting to attack. And we're like, so you attack people? He's like, only in ritual practice. And we're like, which is? He's like, I will not discuss that. It was just really, and he what talked like the this the whole time. Fuck? And then at one point, uh, one of our producers was like, can you just show us your teeth? And Jay and I are kind of half laughing at the dude. Mm -hmm. And he just goes, <laughs> and he does like the thing. And like, he, you see, he's got like, 
bang, like he's obviously implants, but he just goes like in the camera, and we're both like, oh fuck, and he just, and then very calmly back to his original sort of anyway. Yeah, so I'm a vampire. <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> all right, man, thanks, man. Right. We can use all this, right? All right, bye. I don't think I ever made it into the episode, but <laughs> it was so... People who work I at gotta hotels... I got to try and find that footage. Yeah, yeah. People who work at hotels late at night... Sure. There can be... Sometimes they're chill. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, oh, this guy's writing a manifesto, mm. Mm. Or, and it ain't about nothing nice. Or, yeah. This guy's hiding from this guy can't sleep for some reason. See, I feel yeah. justified now. Yeah, yeah. No, I could have been a vampire. Dude, I have definitely like been in hotels on the road and like couldn't sleep or come in late after a night of drinking after mm-hmm. a show. Mm-hmm. And the person behind the counter can sometimes they just look at you with this look where it's like, oh, did, did they am I busted or did I just bust them mm-hmm. doing something? Yeah. Like is there some is there a body behind that? counter that they were about to drag into the back that they think I might have seen them yeah. kill mm-hmm. or did they do they recognize me from when I checked in earlier yeah. I don't know which one <laughs> or if you're checking in okay. and it like takes them forever to get to the desk because it's like late at night and they're probably oh, just yeah. on a laptop or, or something. sleeping mm. yeah sleeping yeah. sure or but you're like they're probably hiding the body you know? Dude, that when I when I was in China when I was in Shanghai I went I got back to the hotel real fucking late with uh, the guy who was like my liaison, basically, and he he's an Australian dude, but he's fluent Chinese. He's like, "Oh, oh mate, I better I better come I better come help you check. I better come help you get back in, because basically at the hotels, this one specifically in Shanghai, like you had to uh, you had to like alert. Mm-hmm. You couldn't just walk past mm-hmm. them. You had to like alert them to the fact that you were going into your room. Yeah, and I was like, "Why is that going to be a problem?" But when we walked in, they were all the whole staff. Mm-hmm. Like three of them sleeping on a couch, on the floor, and then by, they're just openly sleeping. Mm-hmm. So. And he had to like, Ma, he had to like wake them up and mm-hmm. like and tell them in Mandarin that I was going back up to my room. And one of them was like, "Ma," and like went back to bed. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Wait, they just?" He's like, "Oh yeah, man, they just China, the Chinese don't give a shit about anything we Americans think." Yeah, like like yeah, they'll provide like they'll give you service. Yeah, but they're not gonna. There's no like. Bells and whistles mm-hmm. to it. It's like, hey, sure. yeah, it's the middle of the night and we're human. We're going to go to bed yeah. until we're needed. Yeah. It's the same thing with like restaurants there. Like they don't walk up and like, hey, how are you? Can I get you something? They just kind of slowly walk around. Mm-hmm. And when you're ready, you go, hey. And then they come over to you. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. they're not, there's no like, yeah. they don't give a Hello. fuck about like, yeah. oh, presentation. Sure. So it was like, and it was like a pretty nice hotel. I'm like, they're just, there's a guy sleeping on the floor. <laughs> he works here. And he popped up and just said something in Chinese, like, and then went back to bed. That's amazing. <laughs> we can learn from that. Wasn't scared of those guys at all. It's yeah. when you force the employees to stay awake. Mm-hmm. And they're just, they come out yeah. of that room all crack-eyed, like, Hello. Yeah. Yeah. What a horrible Snorting. job. Yeah. Probably just got done, probably masturbating. Sure. I like how okay. we just all accepted, like, yeah, yeah, those yeah. guys masturbate. Yeah. That oh. makes sense. There's, I mean, it's also like... Do you think hotel employees have like there's like one room on the first floor that's like, hey, if you gotta go catch a nap, go to sure. yes. the kill room. Yeah. The you kill know, room. There's a lock on it. The nap shack. The jack shack. <laughs> that is, man, that's yeah, you you were that was a combination of right place, right time, yeah, right amount of high. Yeah. And uh the right amount of barricade to alert security. <laughs> yeah. Which also that but yeah, she was noodling in business that yeah. Or yeah. maybe she was making, maybe she was the assassin. <sighs> not the killer's not who you think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And she just couldn't open the door and yeah. had to just had to do something. Yeah. Maybe she's like, did someone else get to him before me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that could have been her thing. It was Mercedes the whole time. <laughs> Where are you to be found? All, uh, all platforms. All platforms. All everything. It's at really Sam Evans. Uh, really Sam Evans dot com. Uh, yeah, you 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 go out on you go out on the road. You you mm-hmm. going out on the road? I've got stuff coming up. Um, and I really uh, I got an album coming out April tenth. So oh, fantastic! Yeah, yeah, yeah. what what's it going to be called? Uh, Sweet nothings. Yeah. yeah, I like it. You whisper mm-hmm. those. Yes, that yeah. Sam performs his jokes like the audience is a giant ear and he's yes. whispering his yes whispering them sweet nothings into it. Check it out. Check out Sam's album. Seriously, yeah. uh, f- one of the funniest fucking young bucks. Mm-hmm. One of the funniest up and comers, New York City comedy scene. And if you don't, 
want to take Caitlin and I's word for it, which is fucked up. Um, <laughs> you can, you can, you can, uh, Dan Soder while in Edinburgh yeah. said, thinks you're the next thing. Wow. Said that to yeah. us while we were having a walk. That's wow. for true. A coffee walk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Dan was guest number one. Oh. He was. So, so he so knows. If you can't trust us for some fucked up reason, <laughs> trust guest number one, uh, the bonfire zone, Dan Soder. Uh, British, you guys didn't know that. He puts on the American accent, but he's actually British. I would believe it. Yeah. When you talk to him, you're like, oh, I feel, what a lie. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Says he's from Denver. That's bullshit. He's from fucking Birkenshire. That's why we call him the best character comedian. Huh? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Check Sam out. He's literally hilarious. This and is I mean true. That. I yes. don't use the word literally lightly or ever. Thank you, guys. But yes, thank you for coming on, Sam. Okay, bye. Hi guys, it's Caitlin here. As many of you know, I like to end every episode with a song. This one I've actually shared previously, but it's still really fitting to this episode because obviously Sam's story was about eating edibles legally for the first time in Colorado. And I wrote a song about the time that I ate 180 milligrams of THC in a chocolate bar in Colorado. The first time weed was legal for me, and I had a lot of crazy thoughts. I couldn't speak to anybody, and I forgot how to play the guitar. But um, you can find this track on my album, Zinger Songwriter. Uh, the sort of like preamble explanation is a track called 180 Milligrams. And uh, this track is the song that came out of that situation, and it's called Kazoo. So um, I took all those things that I saw on the internet and uh, that I was writing down, and I wrote you guys this song. <laughs> Maybe emojis are just us regressing back to hieroglyphics. <laughs> the entire human race is all a bunch of homos if we're speaking scientifically <laughs> and being attracted to your own flaccid penis would be the worst fetish ever and whenever a pregnant woman swims she's a human submarine 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 know what I mean If you call someone a $2 whore, it's meaner than before because of inflation. <laughs> and if gluttony's a sin, then why is the Bible Belt the fattest part of the American nation? <laughs> and if you've never seen a chicken, but you order chicken fingers, you'd think that chickens were big and scary. <laughs> Jesus and Jesus is the Lamb of God, and Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> Are naked sock puppets, copy is bean soup, bunk beds are people shelves. <laughs> and someone should open an abortion clinic and call it Don't Kid Yourselves. <laughs> Thank you, they did not like that one in Missouri. <laughs> Someone should start a liquor company and call it responsibly. And a group of squid should be called a squad. And bisexual women should be called more or less lesbians. 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 Does that make sense? It's pretty weird that we can unintentionally make a person but not desert. <laughs> It's pretty weird that people will eat each other's assholes but not eat food that fell in the dirt. <laughs> now we know who eats ass in this audience. <laughs> and 
it's pretty weird that people have birthday sex, which is basically having sex to celebrate your parents having sex. <laughs> I guess people are just plain weird. I mean, we invented selfie sticks and Snuggies and fidget spinners. Anyway. Thank you. <laughs>